Hiya, Michelle Johnson with Have Color Will Travel, and welcome back to my studio. Today I have another Quick Tips My Fave video, and I decided I'm going to use that whole collection of words. It's a quick tip, or it's a my fave, or it's a quick tip that's a my fave video. And that's what I've got for you today. I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite art supplies, and the quick tip part is how I use it in a wide variety of art practices. Without having any, you know, suspense about what my favorite art supply is, it's watercolor pencils. I, you know, I've been sitting around thinking about it for a little while because somebody asked me recently, what is my favorite art supply? Because I have a lot. <laughs> I have a lot of art supplies. And I guess that leads people to wonder which one of them I like the best, which is kind of hard for me to say. I'm not a favorites kind of person. I don't play favorites or only use a favorite. I tend to like a lot of things because why would I limit myself? My answer to that question after a little bit of thought was, I think my favorite art supply is watercolor pencils or water soluble things, things that start in one kind of form and then can be uh, transformed. They're more than meets the eye. They're transformed into a whole nother kind of form. But specifically, watercolor pencils are some of my favorite materials because of how they help me in my painting practice. I think it's something that not everybody tends to really realize that they can do because watercolor pencils tend to be, as far as I've noticed, not everybody's special favorite like they are mine. So I thought I might share with you today how I use watercolor pencils in a non-traditional way for my traditional kind of art. I also use them in coloring all of the time. I use them in my uh, card making. I use them in my fine art practice as the actual thing where I'm making this with watercolor pencils. But the reason why they're my favorite is how they help me taking a photo and uh, sizing it up, which is a really challenging thing to do. And watercolor pencils make that surprisingly easy and even just a little bit more fun. Because I don't know about you, most people, their favorite thing is not sizing up an image so that they can take a small thing and turn it into a large drawing or painting. That's usually the, the work of the artwork. But for me, because I use watercolor pencils with this part of my practice, I kind of find it a little bit kind of fun. So let me show you what that's all about. So I have stacks of water soluble things. <laughs> from these uh, little crayons that were gifted to me from a friend who went to visit Japan. All the way down, let me go, let's see, these were another gift I got recently. Some art graph, this is water soluble. Um, honestly, I haven't had this long enough to figure it out, but it is uh, a water soluble tailor shape kind of thing. I have, and I had this video on my channel about how much I love my Stabilo 3-in-1 woodies, which are also water-soluble. Derwent's metallic pencils are water-soluble. These were a gift from, I guess, from somebody's, uh, like, like, um, what am I trying to say? Their card-making days. I use these. These were just random. I don't think you can even get these anymore. These are watercolor crayons that I had when my child was very small. I'm still using. This is my set of Prismacolor watercolor pencils that I take out and about with me because it's pretty easy to just pick this tin up and go and have a fairly diverse collection of colors. Obviously, they're not my favorite ones. We're getting there. Um, we've got <laughs> graphitants. Uh, we have, this was a special treat I gave to myself, Karen Dash watercolor um, crayons. These are Neocolor 2s, obviously fairly new as well. They were a splurge and I'm still learning how to use them. Ink tents, which I'm going to talk about in a second because these are very different from standard watercolor pencils and you wouldn't want to use these in the quick tip way that I'm going to be talking about in just a second. And then we get to the grandparent of my favorite supplies, my Faber-Castell Abacdur watercolor pencils, which you can see I use them a lot. 
they are all over the studio and in different places because they're in constant rotation <clears throat> in projects. I'm not even sure where they all, I know where they are. I mean, I know I have them, but I'm not exactly sure where they are uh, at this moment in time. And to bring them all back for this video would be to undo all of my organizational process of my projects. But this particular watercolor pencil, and I think the uh, this one may be two, you'll notice that they're much smaller because I use these in my sizing up of my images for watercolor and acrylic paints, or excuse me, watercolor and acrylic paintings. And this is how I do it. Let me show you. When I'm sizing up an image, otherwise known as gridding, I use a watercolor pencil instead of a graphite pencil because erasing those grid lines on a canvas when it's done in watercolor pencil is as easy as applying some water and just wiping it off the canvas. As you see me doing here on my pet portrait of my beautiful girl, Mary. The grid lines and my underdrawing have been done in watercolor pencil. And when I decide that I've made a mistake, I wet it with a paintbrush and wipe that clear off. Erasing grid lines that have been done in graphite can mar the canvas. It can make it kind of feel a little squishy and not as tight any longer. It also can leave ghost lines and an oil residue. Watercolor pencils just don't do that. So now you know why this little gray pencil is so little and there are other pencils that are much larger. I have put these to very good use in gridding out my art projects. Before I sign off on this video though, I wanna briefly talk about the differences between water soluble, and I say the word water soluble, not watercolor, water soluble art supplies. Ink tense is very different than a watercolor pencil. You want to make sure before you do something like what I was just showing you on a canvas, you wanna make sure that the water soluble pencil that you're using is not just only water soluble, but water color, meaning that once you draw it onto your surface, you will be able to erase it easily with a, some water on a paintbrush. That is not something you can do with these awesome colored pencils known as ink tents. Ink tents are water soluble, just like, I have these upside down, just like the water color pencils by any maker, except once this is dry, this pigment will be permanent. It will not erase once you've gotten it wet. So it doesn't make it as great of a choice for doing the kind of work that I was just talking about, which is, you know, creating a pencil drawing or a, pen, a, a basic sketch in order that you intend to then paint over. You could paint over this and that would be perfectly fine. But in a watercolor painting, this would be a permanent mark that you wouldn't be able to leave behind. So if you needed grid lines to help you size up an image to a much larger canvas, these would give you quite a bit of problem because it may, leaves a permanent line. Graphitins are the same way. They will leave a permanent line. Karen Dash's watercolor two crayons or neocolor two crayons will do something similar. It is still a watercolor material, but I have noticed if you leave a Caran d'Ache watercolor Neo 2, um, if you leave a, a, a Neo Color 2 line on a piece of paper or canvas or something of that nature, and you don't get it wet straight away, it may set into what you've colored it on, which will make it really challenging if you wanted to use it as part of your under drawing. Not impossible, mind you, but it would make it challenging. So when you are looking for watercolor materials to help you out with your underpaintings that are more like pencils, like I was showing you in the, at the, in the middle of this video, you wanna make sure you're choosing a watercolor pencil, not something that is simply water soluble and I'm trying like here this is the way that they mark it on Derwent's items if it's water soluble it'll have a brush but notice it says these are ink pencils I hear a lot of people call these watercolor pencils they are not they function like them but the end product 
is very different than what you will get with a true watercolor pencil. So I hope you enjoyed this quick tip my phase video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And you know, if you know somebody that might be interested in learning about how flexible and interesting watercolor pencils are, or even this all the different kinds of water soluble uh, art supplies that there are that look like pencils, but actually are more than meets the eye, please share this video with them. It does my channel a huge service and I really appreciate it. So until next time, keep painting, keep creating, coloring, having fun with all of your art supplies, and I will see you in the next video.